Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today for today's Hangout on Air, Hangouts Beyond the Conference Call. My name is Christina Mondini. I am a program manager on our enterprise community team. I'm joined here today by Adam Swidler, our app solution strategist. We also have Joe Abidoud, CIO of Hud Bay Minerals, all the way from Toronto. Now today, we're going to start with Adam, who's going to give a brief introduction on Hangouts. Then we'll move to Joe to learn about how he's using Hangouts at Hud Bay Minerals. Then we'll end with live Q&A from you guys. To participate in the Q&A, simply click on the Q&A button and we'll and enter your questions and we'll answer them. Feel free to up-level other people's questions that you find interesting. Just as a reminder, we will not be covering anything on the product roadmap. And with that, take it away, Adam. Great, thanks very much, Christina. Happy to uh, be here again with you. And Joe, thanks very much uh, for joining us today. Uh, before we get into kind of the fireside chat with Joe, we wanted to highlight a little bit of uh, information and some of, the, some of the details about why we're so excited uh, about Hangouts here at Google. Um, the first slide that we have here is, is some data for you. Uh, I think this kind of gets to the, uh, the trends that are going on in the workplace and why Hangouts is poised, I think, to have such an impact. There's an increasing amount of work that's getting done outside of the office. Uh, there's a study that we looked at that showed 43%, I think this is by the year 2015, 43% of U.S. workers are not expected to be in the office on a regular basis. And of course, this is being supported and driven by all of the new people that are joining the workforce that are just fundamentally growing up in an age where communication occurs wherever they are, uh, kind of regardless of, of their environment, of course, on their, on their mobile devices most typically. Uh, and then in kind of the, the seminal study around communication, um, we learned that, that over 65% of communication is in fact nonverbal. And now that we have a great platform to conduct face-to-face, -face, if you will, uh, interactions over, over Hangouts, uh, we can really take advantage of all that nonverbal communication. Go ahead to the next slide, Christina. I think one of the things that, that's interesting that's going on right now is that we're all walking around with you know, smartphones in our pocket. I'm, I'm a huge fan of my, of my Moto X, but um, you know, in our family, we're a, we're a multi-platform family, so my wife has her iPhone. Uh, so we all walk around with these things, but increasingly we still use our desk phones, right? When I go to a lot of our customer sites, I still see a tremendous amount of stuff going on on the phone. And that's one of the reasons why I think, again, we're, we're so excited about uh, uh, the opportunity that Hangouts represents. Next slide. Now, for a lot of our customers, they do have some amount of video conferencing deployed within their organization but it's typically very, very expensive and really limited in the reach that it gets within the organization. Usually it's only senior management and leadership that gets access to these tools. And so you've only got about 5% of the, of the population of users that are, that are able to access this video uh, conferencing stuff. And if you've ever been involved in any of that stuff, you know that it's absurdly complex, right? You typically need like a, an IT person to help you get that call going. There's all the time and rigmarole spent at the beginning of the call. Uh, getting it up and, and running. Um, and Hangouts is something that you should look at as more than just a potential lower cost replacement for this technology. Go ahead and go to the next slide. Hangouts is going to give you the opportunity to push video out to every corner of your organization and engage the other 95% that right now has no access to it. And again, one of the beautiful things is that virtually everyone is walking around with a video conference uh, a hardware setup in their pocket these days. So if we go to the next slide, you can look at it from both a cost saving standpoint and a productivity and collaboration benefit standpoint. From the cost saving standpoint, uh, we in our research hear that audio conference calls uh, between five and 10 cents per minute per user. And so we're talking to lots of organizations that are paying tens of thousand of dollars a month for audio conference calls. Again, the traditional video conference stuff, the higher end stuff, very, very expensive to set up those, those rooms with all the equipment that you need. And then web conferencing is another area where we're starting to see more use of Hangouts and, and definitely have an opportunity to help with, with cost savings uh, in those areas as well. And then Google Hangouts, I, I somewhat jokingly said it's you know, approximately $0 uh, because, of course, it's included in the Google App Suite, right? So for $50 per user per year, uh, US dollars, you get the full suite of applications, including Hangouts. And so the more your users take advantage of Hangouts, uh, over something like an audio conference call, the closer you get to sort of a zero dollar cost on these things. Um, so tremendous cost savings and benefits there. So 
that kind of sets the stage, I think, for, for why we're so excited uh, at Google about what, what we're doing with Hangouts. And we, we, I was in Toronto a few weeks ago and I met with Joe in his office and I was really excited to hear about some of the things that, that he was doing. Uh, and so I'm happy to have him join us today. Uh, Joe, welcome. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, your company and yourself? Oh, great. Thank you for, uh, for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so Hud Bay Minerals, we're, uh, we're an integrated mining company. Uh, we specialize in the exploration, the development, and the operation of, you know, basic, uh, uh, sorry, base and, and precious metals. Uh, we're, we operate in the Americas. We're primarily in Canada and South America and have a small footprint in the U.S. Um, roughly about right now, we're probably around somewhere around 5,000 employees um, in, in, in various locations. Terrific. Terrific. And, and, and tell us what, uh, your, tell us what role your role there, role is, there Joe. is, Joe. So I'm the Chief Information Officer, uh, as you mentioned. You know, I'm obviously responsible for information technology. So everything from you know operations day to day, keep the lights on, to you know trying to introduce new technology, new capabilities into the business, into the space of mining. Um, a lot of challenges that obviously come with that. You know, we operate in very remote areas where sometimes infrastructure tends to be scarce. Um, but uh, you know, one of the things we've been doing probably since, you know, early 2012 is we've been pushing a lot of things into the cloud, and, and that's where, you know, Google, Google came in at that point. Fantastic. Um, maybe you could start to sort of set the, the uh, overall stage by telling us a little bit about how you guys made the decision to move to Google Apps and, and what that was like. It wasn't a difficult decision, in fact. Uh, back... You know, as I mentioned, two, two to three years ago, strategically we realized that, you know, our business was going to expand. You know, we were going to go from just being primarily a Canadian company to now expanding into South America where there's multi-language. You know, we're going to become a very geographically um, diverse organization and we were going to grow very quickly. Uh, the cloud uh, philosophy lends itself well to, you know, to IT organizations that want to be agile, want to be able to scale up and down fairly fairly quickly um, and without having to add a whole lot of complexity into your infrastructure. So, you know, the, the cloud strategy really started with Google. It, it, it hasn't ended there, but it definitely started with Google. And we looked at obvious services, you know, things like, you know, basic productivity services like, you know, email and chat and video, you know, things that um, were very traditionally in the office environment, in the workstation, you know, locally installed on people's machines. Um, to then going into a more of a cloud-based environment. And when we looked at it back in 2012, uh, Google was obviously the leader in that space at the time. And, and the, uh, the integration, uh, the integration of, of Google into you know, the Hud Bay environment as we moved into South America uh, made it very seamless. So let's dig a little bit deeper into how you, in your organization, you know, were communicating before the, the deployment of Google Apps, and in particular, what you guys are starting to see with Hangouts and how you're using it. Uh, so when I got, when I arrived at, at Hud Bay, the, the communication or, you know, the, the, the sort of the cl if collaboration, if you want to call it collaboration, was very traditional. People would physically fly from location to location. The only thing they had was phones. People didn't use instant messaging at, at of any sort, uh, definitely not in the enterprise. They might have used it in the personalized, but it wasn't it wasn't widely used in the, in the enterprise. There was no video conferencing capability at, at all. Uh, and so when I came in 2010, so a couple of years prior to, to Google, obviously you know you start looking at traditional video conferencing equipment to try to cut things down, like travel costs, improve uh, the user experience for meetings, and and things like that. But that's very costly to do. If anybody's ever deployed like a Tamburg or a Polycom or any one of those. Um, high-end video conferencing units, you know, you're into the tens of thousands of dollars just to do, uh, just to do it for one. So, we only could do it for select few locations. Um, very, very, uh, very expensive to maintain. Um, but then, as, as we started to move over into the Google space, uh, what you'll notice is that, you know, with with Google Hangouts and and with uh, you know, with instant messaging and chat and Google Talk and all of those things nicely integrated with your calendar and your mail and so forth, you can then begin to deploy that capability to every end user. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be confined to a boardroom or a meeting room. You know, it's now on, available on their mobile device, on their desktop, uh, uh, and it is also now available actually with, with Chromebox for meetings in, in, 
in the uh, in the conference room as well. Um, and so well, what's really happening now, at least what I see is happening, is you know the the world that we live in now. If anybody's used things like I don't know if you guys are familiar with mobile apps like Tango or Skype or you know BlackBerry Messenger or anything like that. Video calling and video chatting now with you know 4G and and those types of uh, speeds and bandwidth capabilities are now becoming more common. And video call video calling I think is going to become more common in the workplace, um, but it's not going to look exactly like it looks like um, you know in your in your personal space. People want to do things like screen share. Um, presentations, um, you know, and, and and stuff like that. Uh, record record meetings and, and so forth. So you're starting to see a merging of a lot of those social utilities with a lot of the business utilities um, that exist in the space. And one of the things we've been doing a lot with Hangouts is we've been leveraging it in that way. Um, and that's why I think the adoption of it is picking up quite quite nicely. Fantastic. Um, because you guys are operating in, in sort of a truly, you know, long distance global operation, share with, share with us a little bit some of, of the stuff you told me when I was in your office or, or even just some of the more recent things that, that have happened uh, that you've used Hangouts for. And maybe, you know, we can we can benefit a little bit from from envisioning how you guys are using it in a specific use case. We've used it. Uh you know, different ways. It all depends on people, on people's work styles and, and how they choose to collaborate. Obviously, some people still, you know, are, are you know, camera shy and, and don't like video. But we've actually had a lot of success with it. In fact, two days ago, we had a, a SOX control meeting with the entire IT department. We had 11 participants from uh, people in Lima, Peru, up in the Andes Mountains of Peru, and northern Manitoba, and in Toronto, um, all convene. From either some people were on their at their workstation, some people were in conference rooms. Um, so it was a very you know casual uh, meeting um, that happened with you know very little infrastructure, really required no software deployment. Um, you know it was very easy to do, um, and it improves the, the whole meeting experience just in general. And you know I thought that uh, you know that was something that you know we couldn't do before, um, not not easily anyway. Um, the other things I, you know, I like to see happening is, you know, we've got situations with, you know, uh, an example would be our, our underground mine in, in northern Manitoba is a mile deep, um, and it takes you quite a while to get down there. Uh, if you've got an issue with a piece of machinery that, you know, you're, you're working with, and the, the guy that understands that that piece of equipment happens to be on the surface, well, you, know, you can point your mobile phone to that piece of equipment using a Google Hangout. You know, and you know, and they could help you kind of triage or troubleshoot it. So those are some of the applications that that, that could apply in, in our space. Um, you know, are they was being done every day? You know, probably not. But uh, you know, I mean, how well can they get a, you know connections underground? Well, you know, we have internet connection availability that uh, that exists. But again, that all depends on your local infrastructure and, and what your what your limitations are. Great. Great. What have you seen in terms of, of the use of the traditional audio conference call in your organization? Are you, are you seeing that declining a bit as Hangouts replaces some of that? It has declined a bit. I don't, I don't have actually any use of statistics here. I can just tell you from you know, the people that I interact with, Hangouts is slowly becoming more of the platform of choice for communication versus traditional audio. And especially internally within the organization, I would say there's probably audio bridges used, um, definitely being used, you know, for a lot, a lot of external calls with, um, you know, with other companies and things of that nature. But definitely internally, it's becoming more and more adopted. And just from your experience, I know sometimes it's hard for us to describe to to people like, you know, why it's more valuable to have that face-to-face -face interaction. Um, let me get some of your sort of, you know, uh, uh, thoughts on on why that face to face is so much more compelling than just hearing a voice over the phone. You know, st step out of the business world for a sec. I mean, just go into your personal life, right? I mean, everybody, anyone that's got a mobile phone, I, I'm pretty sure that has definitely that has kids or teenagers, um, most likely has some sort of you know, mobile video app on their phone. It could be Viber, Tango, Skype, you know, Hangouts, it could be whatever. Um, and, you know, it, you know, this is something that's been around for quite some time. The reason why it hasn't taken off so well is just because bandwidth hasn't really caught up. And it's caught up now, and we're seeing that people are choosing to do, you know, video calls over audio calls more so than ever. And it's just naturally making its way into sort of the business world. Um, 
So I, I just think, you know, just like the consumerization of IT happened, you know, four or five years ago, you know, with with mobile devices and BYOD and all that sort of stuff started to come in and social. Uh, uh, again, you know, video is just another way of, of, of coming into the coming to the enterprise. And so, I, again, you can't you can't beat a, a face to face call. Um, like you said, there's a lot of communication that's nonverbal, uh, and I think that's always going to be the case. Great. Uh, I want to remind people that are on the audience, you can submit questions through the Q&A app that's part of the, the Hangout platform uh, that we're using today. So uh, we've got a couple that have been coming in. I uh, encourage you guys to keep those coming. Um, one question in particular and an area that I wanted to dive into a little bit more. I know when I was in your office a couple of weeks ago, I think you guys had just gotten your first Chromebox for Meetings device. So tell me a little bit about how that you know, sort of early uh, uh, work with that has been and, and maybe some of your plans for the future on that. I mentioned earlier, you know, the traditional video conferencing equipment um, is quite costly. It's quite expensive. Um, you know, requires a little bit more complexity to deploy. Um, so with Chromebox, what we've done, you know, we we, we initially purchased eight units. Uh, we sent three down to Peru. We sent three up to our mine site up in northern Manitoba. And we kept two in the corporate office. And what that's allowed us to do is that's allowed us to deploy video conferencing capability in in a meeting room. Um, where we normally, you know, would have, you know, cost us, you know, 10 times as much to do so. Um, what that does is that allows people to join a hangout from a meeting room, uh, as well as from their mobile device, as well from their workstation. And, you know, I mentioned earlier, you know, we had 11 participants in, in a SOX meeting. Some of those people were in one of those Chromebox meeting rooms. Others were at their workstation. Uh, one gentleman was actually, you know, over, I think, his tablet uh, on a Wi-Fi connection. Yeah, the, the Chromebox is easy to deploy. You know, I'm sure you guys you will do, you know, can do the sales pitch and, and tell people all about it. But you know, it's 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 pretty much like installing a video game console. I mean, if you ever taken a video game console home and you plugged it into your TV, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's probably easier than that. Um, it, you can do it over Wi-Fi, um, so you know you're not having to run a bunch of cabling if if you don't have to. Uh, and what's nice is you know it integrates nicely with the Google Calendar and and, and you know and the whole platform. So it's really plug and play. Yeah, that's fantastic. Since you gave me the opening, just for those of you that haven't heard about Chromebox for Meetings, this is a very low cost, uh, sort of all-in-one package that you can purchase uh, roughly $1,000 US for the cost. It comes with a custom configured Chromebox. It comes with a, a really, I, I think, high quality combination microphone and speaker. Uh, comes with a remote, comes with a camera. Basically, all you need to do is provide a, a device, uh, sorry, a display in the room, and that room can become a video conference room that is then sort of plugged into the whole Hangouts infrastructure. And so we really see a great opportunity to create a lot of low cost entry endpoints in these conference rooms um, and extend the reach uh, of the Hangout platform through that mechanism. Um, we wanted to focus a lot on Hangouts for this session, but obviously there are other portions of the apps platform, such as Drive and the collaborative documents and stuff like that. So Joe, let me, let me just ask you to talk a little bit about some of the things that you guys are doing with those tools. Drive, Google Drive, you know, for those of you that, um, that are you know, familiar with it, um, um, again, that was a capability that did, did not exist before in the enterprise. Um, you know, people started, to pick up on, on cloud storage. Around the time we, we were implementing Google, we knew we, we needed to be able to provide that flexibility. Um, and the, you know, the way, you know, not without, not with, without getting too technical, the way we've sort of architected the environment really allows anybody to come in with an internet, connect, internet connection. You, don't, you, you, know, you don't require a VPN or, or, or anything like that. And so you can access your files again from your mobile device, from your computer, from a friend's computer, um, anywhere where you, you, know, you can connect to the web. So, Google Drive has, has been tremendous um, for us in terms of being able to share documents um, and the way we the way we collaborate on, on documents um, it's, it's, it's changed quite a bit. Great. And now we're ready for some of our live Q and A. Uh, and our first question is about uh, Joe, who in your organization uses Hangouts currently? Which which departments and what type of roles? Finance department, definitely. Our CFO is a big user of it, so he brings in his other, you know, VPs and CFOs from um, all over, and uh, they have their their monthly calls using using Hangouts. Uh, I obviously use it um, quite frequently. Uh, people at the mine sites use it, um, 
uh, mostly in the operations areas, uh, logistics. Um, we have, you know, we have a resource that you know sits in Columbia and supports our logistics group up in northern Manitoba, and so they use you know Google Hangouts quite a bit um, uh, to go back and forth with. So um, I, I would say that you know Google Hangouts has a long, still a long way to go in terms of adoption, but you know we're we're, we're seeing it pick up. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Um, this is from um, Justin. This how, is from how do you Justin. See how, like how do you see and things like hangouts and smartphones your strategies impacting for investments your strategies for investments in telecommunication and systems in the next and phone years. systems in the next several years? That's a great question. Um, I think it's going to have a significant impact. Uh, you know, I mentioned earlier that we went and bought a Chromebox for meeting, and it was a tenth of the cost of a, a traditional video conferencing, you know, unit from from Cisco or Polycom. Um, it's 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 definitely disruptive. Um, you know, technology like that is disruptive. What, what's nice about technology like that, and what what we're seeing, at least what I'm seeing, users want, um, and, and and this is this isn't anything new, but everybody wants it to be integrated. Uh, you know, and people don't want ten different applications kind of running, and you have an have a IT guy trying to figure out how everything kind of works together. Uh, you know what's nice about the Google platform, and you know other vendors will also claim claim this is, is is that all of the product just integrate well together. I mean, Google Hangouts works with Google Drive, works with Google Mail, works with Google Calendar. Um, you don't really have to do anything to make it work. Um, you know, once you're on the platform, um, it, it's it, it it's it's quite seamless. So I think, you know, as that integration becomes more and more important or more at the center. Uh, of how people want to work, everybody wants everything to be integrated. It's going to become more and more difficult for those, you know, those one-off players that are only specializing maybe one aspect, or you know, they might be just a best of breed in, in one area to to really compete. Uh, you know, for example, w you know, one of the things we're seeing Google Hangouts begin to compete with is WebEx, right, and GoToMeeting. So it's not there yet in terms of all the enterprise capability, but it's getting there. And what's nice about it is, you know what, it comes, like you said, with the subscription. It's integrated with my calendar. It's integrated with my mail. Um, it's integrated with my drive. Um, but today, if I want to use WebEx, you know, I have my own email system. I have my own web. So, you know, the, the ability to begin to integrate these products really, A, draws a lot of cost effectiveness, right? Um, uh, it creates uh, a much, I would think, a more seamless, uh, you, you know, user environment. I mean, most of my users would probably agree with that. So, yeah, to answer your question, I mean, I know it was a long-winded answer, but it definitely makes you start to think about how you begin to invest, invest down the road. Obviously, we've got those old video conferencing units. Um, you know, that's a sunken cost. We're not going to rip them out and throw them away. We're still going to continue to use them. But I think the growth going forward um, is now pointing into more technology like the Chromebook. That's great. Uh, we actually had a question come in from uh, Maurizio about what kind of hardware do you use in the conference room to enable Hangouts? And I think just to, again, clarify, the Chromebox for meetings is all the hardware you need in a box except for the display that allows you to create a video conference room out of what, what would previously could be thought of as a dark conference room, right? Because it didn't have a uh, video connection. So one of the things that we saw when we talked to our customers uh, as we were thinking about how to push that that aspect of the Hangout usage was that there's lots of conference rooms that already have a projector in them, right? Because they're used to people coming in and plugging in their, their laptop or their device and, and presenting uh, the slides or whatever. So a great opportunity with Chromebox for meetings. Again, very low cost. There's, I think it's a, a, about $1,000 total. The first $750 is the cost of the device, and then there's a $250 uh, per year sort of annual uh, service fee. Um, but again, as, as Joe pointed out, I mean, that is <clears throat> on the order of, of one-tenth of the cost of your typical uh, video conferencing setups and makes it, I think, really uh, easy for organizations to, you know, 10x the number of conference rooms that they have connected and, and make them into video conference rooms. So, Maurizio, thanks for that question. Uh, Christina, what else do we have coming in? Uh, from Carolyn, again, we have, uh, has your training department started using Hangouts to deliver internal trainings? Uh, no, they have not, um, and the reason being is that uh, typically the type of training we have, which is you know, majority of the training happens at the mine site. You know, things, things that are related to um, you know working underground and, and and stuff like that. Many of those individuals are, are contractors or um, 
laborers and they don't necessarily have computers. So we have facilities locally on site, but you know, one of the things we were able to do um, when we actually went live with Google for the people that did have Google is we did conduct training sessions um, using Hangouts. Okay. That's great. Uh, there's uh, what I think That's is great. kind of interesting. Uh, there's question here what from I think Mike is kind of interesting. Is, uh, uh, when do you think Hangouts will be natural and commonplace? Not a scheduled meeting, but is natural as scheduled meeting, but as natural as picking up the phone. That's a great question, and and I I, th I think again it's, it's to the point I, w I was talking about earlier, where you're seeing it more in in, in your personal life than you are in, in the business world. Um, it it is actually fairly casual now. Uh, for example. Because it's integrated with your chat, and your chat obviously has presence integrated with it. You know, one of my guys out in in in, uh, in, in northern Manitoba, or even one of my guys in Peru, I'll literally send a message saying, "Look, you know, can you chat? Uh, uh, you know, can you hang out?" And they'll say yes, and then we'll just click the video, you know, video camera icon, and and you know, boom, we're there. So here for me, it's become it's become a very casual form of communication. Uh, in fact, it was it was it was that way before we got Chromebox for meetings. So it started off very casual, and what the Chromebox meetings has allowed us to do is just structure it more meeting-like, more more scheduled-like um, than um, th than you would normally have, you know, with the traditional kind of meeting setup. Great. Okay. We, we have a question from Damon. He's, he's asking, have you noticed a measurable increase in productivity after adopting Google Hangouts? Say, you know, just from observation, I have noticed that, um, I, you know, I've noticed that the, the adoption, what the adoption has really allowed people to do is, it's really allowed people to kind of communicate, I would say more, I want to say more effectively, but you know that's not necessarily being fair because there are people that don't use it that you know will argue that hey I communicate effectively too. Um, I, you know again what it, what it comes down to it comes down to people's style, and I didn't talk about this before because you know it wasn't you know I could spend a whole hour on it, but one of the things I learned to appreciate when we migrated our Google when we migrated over to Google and we went into the into the cloud, um, I personally project managed the change. Uh, management component of this because I realized um, how personal everybody's you know work and workspace is to them and people what you'll learn what you'll appreciate about people is how unique everybody is in how they work uh, how how unique are people are when they use things like email or when they use things like uh, you know spreadsheets or, or, or any sort any sort of collaboration tool um, so I think you know when you when you talk about people's productivity uh, you know, some people tell you I'm very pr pr productive and I don't use it. <laughs> so, you know, I think it's helped my productivity and my team's productivity. And you know, the finance group will say the same thing, and you know, other pr people in the organization will say the same thing. But again, it comes down to your work style and your preference. And I just think that you know, if again, if you look in your personal life, you know, if you know, if you've got kids or teenagers or, you know, you're you're going to see that. It's, it's, it's just a natural evolution of the way we are beginning to work and we're beginning to collaborate. You know, it's interesting. You, you put up, I think, Adam, a statistic that says something like 43% of you know, workers are not going to be in the office on a regular basis. There's one statistic that I believe, which hasn't been measured, and I think 100% of the workforce is going to be expected to be able to connect at any given point in time. Right, so you know, you work, I work, you know, whatever our you know regular normal shift is, you know, nine to five or eight to four or eight to six or whatever. But the reality is, we work all the time. I mean, if you've got a mobile device and you've got internet connectivity, believe it or not, you're working all the time. You know, unless you turn it off and you're in the pool or you're in the shower or you're in the beach or or, or, or where you know you just can't. But um, the reality is 100% of us are going to have to be able to work at any given point. Yeah, I, I think that's very true. Uh, you mentioned in the middle of, of your comments there a little bit about your, your creating a personal workspace. Joe, would you mind showing us one of your favorite uh, Google Hangout effects as we wrap up here? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, so some of the things we do, this is sort of to let people know when you're kind of bored in a meeting, um, is we begin to do a little bit of fun stuff like this, you know, and just to crack some jokes and the uh, to do things, you know, add a little bit of facial hair, you know, stuff like that, just to, just to make it sort of, calm. Your I alter guess. ego. And you know, it is Not Friday. Your alter so ego. Do things like that on Friday, so. Yeah, that's yeah, fantastic. You know, sometimes when I talk to uh, uh, enterprise customers and they see that kind of stuff and they say, "Oh, that's not professional. That's not corporate." 
And I think here at Google, we take a very different approach, which is that it certainly can be part of your corporate culture uh, and you can bring you know, these sort of fun and whimsical things. Obviously, you know, they have their place in, in, in context, but... There's a time and place for everything. Uh, well, I think we're sort of at the, at the end of our time. Joe, I want to thank you very much for joining us. And Christina, I know you had a few closing remarks that you wanted to make. I did. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us live and for everyone watching the recording. Adam, as always, thank you for being here. Uh, we are very excited to announce our next, uh, our next Hang On On Air is going to be June 17th. Ever wonder how these uh, gas stations get fixed? Well, we'll show you how. Uh, join us on June 17th to hear about how Oscar W. L Larson uses Hangouts and Drives to fix, to fix these stations. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, we'll post a recap post in the next couple of days answering the question we didn't get to. Thanks.